When Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala was born in the year 1115, round about 1703 Christian era, in a place known as Uayna, in the, in the Arabian Peninsula, and the Ottomans had no control over that region, barakallahu feekum. It was a city, it was a place that was, that was governed by tribes and tribal leaders. One town known as Tuwaym, in the region of Najd, one town, there were four kings in one town, and they argued amongst each other, and they divided it into four pieces. Each quarter having its own king. This was in the time of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab when he was born in that era. So when he spread his da'wah, and he started calling to Tawheed and the Sunnah in a town known as Huraymila and Uyayna, and he was giving da'wah in those places, two of the brothers of a, of a king of Dir'iyah, a little village, which is still there north of, just next to Riyadh, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia till now. Two of the brothers of the king there, that they entered, they went to the, to the village of Huraymla and they started listening to Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab talk about Tawheed. Not talk about Islamic State and establishing the rule and we're going to take over the government. Of, none of that. Tawheed, Sunnah. The ulama, they say when he wrote Kitab al-Tawheed, he was still in his 20s. Still in his 20s when he wrote Kitab al-Tawheed. Then, when he, got, when, when he was exiled, when he was expelled, from Uyayna, then he traveled to Dir'iyah. When he was in Dir'iyah, the wife of the ruler, she started sitting and taking knowledge from Sheikh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. She went to her husband who was the king of that village. King of a village. It was a village. Like a king of Shogwanas. That's what it's like. King of a village. So his wife, she went to him and she said, there is a scholar who has come to us, Dir'iyah, to our village. Go and sit with him. He said, no, tell him to come to me. He said, no, no. She said to her husband, look, a woman. This is Salafiyah. A woman saying to her husband, no, my husband, no. Knowledge, you go to it. You are the leader of this, of this village. You are the head, you are the king of this village. Go to him. Go to him and sit with him. So he went to him and he listened to him. What do you have to say? So he gave him that one. And he was impressed because they never heard that before. Remember, this is a place next to Dir'iyah. They, they said that they had, they had domes and mausoleums, graves of the companions. And they used to go there and sacrifice animals at the graves. They had the grave of Zayd bin Khattab. And they used to go there and make sajda and tawaf and slaughter animals. There was a grave, there was a cave known as Ghar bin Tul Amir, the cave of the daughter of the leader. They say that she was about to be raped at that place. So Allah cleft that place, that, 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 that cliff or that mountain into piece, into, a, in, into two pieces, creating there a cave. So the people used to go there and leave offerings for the owners of the cave, meaning the jinn and the devils. They had the shrine of Eve, Hawa, in Jeddah, a hundred meters long. And they had three domes, one over her feet, one over her belly button and one over her head. And they said, this is the grave of Eve of Hawa. Because you know, in the time of Adam, they were taller. And they used to charge for people to come in. He, they go to the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu in the time of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. And they used to rub their cheeks on the, on the floor next to the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Seeking tabarruk from the dirt next to his grave. So Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab gave them da'wah, gave them da'wah. Muhammad bin Saud, who was the ruler of Dir'iyah, he said, I accept your da'wah. He took the da'wah. Then he said to him, if you pledge allegiance to me as the king, we will spread this da'wah. And we will unite the Arabs. And we will unite them upon Tawheed and Sunnah. There were no Ottomans there. There was no, there was no Dawla Uthmaniya. There was no, there was no Ottoman Empire in operation in Najd. Da'wah was spread. And they spread Tawheed in the whole of that land. Till this day. That land is a land of Tawheed. Universities in every major city. Even every minor city has a university. For Islam and Sunnah. As soon as the Adhan is called. Every shop has to close. By law. No shop is allowed to be open. When the Adhan has been called. Why? Because everyone is given the opportunity to pray. 
everyone. People, women are not allowed to walk around naked in skirts. Not allowed. That's the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It has the lowest crime rate in the world. Drug abuse and rape is something is almost unknown in that place. There are no churches, no synagogues, no mandars, no Jewish temp, no no uh, Sikh temples, nothing. Only masajid for the worship of Allah. This is the land that the Khawarij they say we want to destroy, the, we want to kill the king. This king whose, whose forefathers were the ones that Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab gave his pledge of allegiance to and gave his daughter in marriage to his son. These are the people that you want to destroy and now you want to say that you're upon Islam following the way of the Sahaba. This is the way of the Sahaba. This is the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Don't be deceived. You want to follow the haqq? Follow the way of the Sahaba. Jazakumullahu khairan. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa sallam.